What's up, guys? Lucas Till and Steven Talbot with Autumn Athletes, back from another episode of the podcast. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the dead zone and just some uh, basics of sort of pitch design and uh, how to have some more success on the field. Uh, just right off the bat, the dead zone. I'm not even sure who first called it the dead zone. Yeah, no clue. I think it was a driveline guy I saw it on Twitter somewhere. Uh, but it's referring to basically the spin direction of 1030 for a righty and 11, or uh, sorry, 130 for a righty and 1030 for a lefty. So basically it's right in between uh, completely side arm and completely over the top. And as a result, you're basically not maximizing vertical break or horizontal break. And so you kind of mm -hmm. just get an okay number on both of those. Yep. Um, and that also usually means that your uh, slider or curveball or whatever breaking ball you throw from that same arm slot is then gonna be in the bat path uh, for a righty if you're a righty and uh, for a lefty if you're a lefty. So just a lot of not ideal things going on mm -hmm. with the dead zone off the bat. But yeah. uh, do you have any initial thoughts on that? Well, yeah, like you, like you said, when you're in those, you know, those ranges and you see that, and that's why the technology is really important, right? So we can see that on things like a Rapso, for example. But like you said, there's less room for, you know, separation between your off-speed pitches. And not only that, I mean, hitters annihilate these pitches. They tend, more, yeah. you know, more often they tend to hit these pitches harder. And um, so that's kind of an issue. A lot of people have known that now. So it's kind of key to go in and fix uh, this issue with your pitches. Yeah, it's sort of, uh, you know, it's not saying that if you're in the dead zone, you're automatically going to get teed off on, but right. it just means that you have a less less room for error. Um, yeah. So if we can get you out of the dead zone, you have a greater margin for error. So if you could say, uh, hypothetically, if your fastball was directly over the top and you had a 12 o'clock spin direction, mm -hmm. and let's say you could touch 23 to 25 inches of vertical break, the mm -hmm. more that you start getting horizontal, so closer towards 3 o'clock, the less vertical break you're going to have. Yep. And so obviously it's a range, the more and more you get down. When you get right in the middle, or let's say once you, if you get all the way to sidearm and you're throwing the ball at three o'clock and you have zero hor or zero vertical break, you're gonna get that 23, 25 inches of horizontal break. When you're right in the middle of both of those, now we're going like 12 and 12, 13 and 13. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of the old adage, you know, energy here takes away from energy there. And so when we're not maximizing either one, both are very subpar and neither one is going to be deceiving to a hitter. So the ball yeah. kind of just almost floats in there for lack of a better term. And yeah. um, so in general, you just kind of want to chase an axis either way yes. and kind of looking at if you can get on a rap and see your numbers and kind of see which one you trend more towards, you kind of want to steer in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, I can't, I couldn't find any MLB numbers on vertical back bat angles. So basically the angle that the bat is when it's coming through the zone. Um, if, if you were parallel with the earth, that'd be zero. If your bat was perpendicular with the earth, that'd be 90 degrees. Um, and so based on blast motion that we've done here in the, in the, in the gym, in the gym yeah. for yeah. our assessments, yeah. the average for our athletes has been negative 31 uh, with a low of around 18, 20 degrees and a high of around 45, 50 degrees. So I drew out this graph and I'll put it up on the video, but basically yeah. There's this window of a bat coming through the zone from anywhere from 18 to 45, 50 degrees, and if your ball is spinning in that in that zone, it's gonna Hence be the dead. yeah. That's what kind of what the dead zone is. Yeah. You're gonna be a lot harder to miss a bat because your 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 ball will be moving along the bat mm -hmm. instead of up and down or side to side away from the bat. So and your slider instead of moving off the barrel is gonna be moving into the barrel which is not mm -hmm. ideal. That's where you got to be more fine and guys have to be more fine and pick their pitches or even like, you know, more reliant on their off speed. Like we've had guys come in from the pro level that throw their off speed at a pretty high clip because of the fact that they're in this zone. And, you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but you know, that results in, you know, having a nitpick and then go to secondary pitches that may or may not work. So yeah. if it's not an elite level for spin and velo. Yeah. Again, I mean, just cause you're in the dead zone doesn't mean you're not gonna have success. If you can, uh, spin the heck out of it and you're spinning your fastball at 2800 yeah. find and, a way to increase it yeah. yeah you're at the 130 but you're still getting 17 18 inches of e-break and 17 or 18 inches of, of h break That's 100 and you're getting a lot of you're getting a lot of movement yeah. then uh you're gonna probably still have some success so yeah. it's not uh you know a death sentence if you're in the dead zone it's just definitely you've got some work to do and you definitely have to excel in other areas to kind of make up for uh your lack of ability to miss barrels uh, yeah. the other way so if you are a guy that is a normal pitcher or is someone that's not on the elite level for spin rate or velo? Yeah, this becomes very important. <laughs> it's important to 
uh, be able to, let's see if we can get away from the dead zone. Um, but let's see what else. Yeah, like I said, just try to chase an axis. And, you know, if you're a guy that's a lower three quarter slot, then you might want to be able to start trending towards more horizontal break and a more maybe two o'clock, 2.30 uh, spin direction for a righty. And then, you know, 9.30 or 10 o'clock spin direction for a lefty. Yeah. If you're a high three quarter guy more over the top, then you want to probably start trending more towards, you know, one o'clock or even 1230 yeah, uh, for a righty and, you know, around 11 o'clock for a lefty. And so again, just kind of get on a rap soto and see what you're at and then kind of adjust from there. Uh, the reason we kind of want to talk about this was, A, it's been talked a lot about in the gym lately, but also yeah. I was having a conversation with one of our trainees and obviously there's this whole sticky substance thing coming out with the MLB and, yeah. uh, you know, Garrett Cole gave up a couple of runs the other day and he said something like, oh, you know, Garrett Cole's definitely in the dead zone without sticky stuff. And I was like, well, <laughs> that's not really exactly that's, how yeah. that works. Uh, that's not how that works exactly. Dead zone isn't referring to your spin rate at all. It's just spin direction is sort of the biggest uh, contributing factor to that. Yeah. So if we can adjust the spin direction, which is the way that the ball is spinning, think of a clock with 12 o'clock at the top, 6 o'clock on the bottom, 3 o'clock towards a right-handed thrower, 6 o'clock towards a left-handed thrower, or uh, 9 o'clock towards a left-handed thrower. Um, you just want to kind of be away from the middle yeah. of... 130. And that graph should be a helpful viewpoint that yeah. you drew out. So we'll, again, we'll put that up so you can see that. Definitely. Uh -huh. And it's that's where pitch design comes in, right? So get on a wrap soto, you know, if you got one around you, you know, somewhere, find a facility where you can get on, look for those numbers, see what your stuff's doing, and then try to maximize from there. You're going to try to miss some barrels, hopefully. So I mean, I kind of compare it to, you know, guys that are throwing like 88 in the big leagues, like they just have a, you have to be more fine, right? They, their command is perfect. If you miss over the middle at 88, there's a higher chance you're going to be yeah. hit over the fence. Uh, same sort of thing with the dead zone. If you're throwing at a 130 spin direction or 1030 for a lefty and you miss middle middle, there's a higher chance it's going to be hit than if you're throwing at you know a one o'clock spin direction, two o'clock spin direction, mm -hmm. something that's going to have some more deception to the hitter. So yeah. again, everything here isn't just like a, a guaranteed fix for everything, but we're just trying yeah. to give you the best chance to be successful. Uh, so if possible, get away from the dead zone. Yeah, try to maximize uh, those pitches. You get on a rap soda somewhere. Yeah. You any final thoughts on that? I think that's pretty much no, it. I think we covered it. We'll show that graph, like I said. So. Yeah. If you guys have any questions about the dead zone or just pitches on in general, let us know. Hit us uh, up. Besides that, thank you. We'll talk to you guys next time. See you guys.